Hello, it's Mrs. McCullough here again. And today I want to talk to you about how readers retell and they write down some of their retelling. So what I want us to focus on is the idea that your thinking voice will keep talking to you even after the text is over. And that's when you start to think about what would be the components you need to retell. And so to review from our last lesson, when readers retell, they have to remember two things. They have to remember the most important information. What are the details that are most important that we need to pull out of this text? And we need to put them in order. So what would be the right order? Well, as a review, we were just talking about fiction yesterday, just stories, just literature, things that are made up. And all literature will have certain important information. Those are called story elements. Say those with me, story elements. Yes, and so all literature has the same story elements. Let's look at them here. They have setting, and that can be where the story takes place, but also when it takes place. They have characters, and the heart is there because characters always want something. They really have a wish or a want, something they want to fulfill or happen. But there's a problem. Remember the flag? The flag represents the problem. What is the problem? We've got a big problem here. Woohoo! There's the caution flag. Beware of the problem. Then it tends to get a little bit worse. So there are your storm clouds. They tried this, it didn't work. They tried this, it didn't work. And so it's just, it's not going well, okay? And then some stories, especially in second and third grade, you'll find will have a guide, someone who comes along and helps them. And then the solution, yes, the problem was fixed. It always will have all of those story elements. All literature will have all of those story elements. And they have to come in order. So this always comes at the beginning. This box represents the beginning. The problem is very near the beginning, the first couple of pages usually. And then as the story goes on in the middle, it's all about how it got worse. And then the solution is near the end. The last page, the last couple of pages, it depends on how the book's written, okay? So we practiced this yesterday. We actually practiced this with the bad case of stripes. We pulled out all of those different uh, pieces, those story elements, and you had for your assignment, you had a paper that looked a lot like this on the computer to help you remember which story elements you needed to put and in what order. And so today I want to show you how readers actually write those things down. Sometimes they just say them, but a lot of times readers will write down their after reading thoughts. So I want to take you to my computer and I want to show you this icon that we had last time. So we talked about how when readers write down their thoughts, it's like they're making tracks. Well, you can still make tracks after the reading. So we're going to make some tracks like these footprints by the pool, whoops, or footprints here in the snow. So we're going to make tracks of what our after reading thinking voice is telling us about a bad case of stripes. So let's go back in and think about the text and those specific story elements. So setting. Setting is where, but it could also be when. It could be where and it could be when. And we talked about that it happened at Camilla's house. It happened uh, at Camilla's school. But, you know, it's the when that's pretty important to Camilla's story. It happened on the first day of school. So I just jot down with my marker on some sticky notes or I could write it right here in the box. I just write down a few words. This isn't a full sentence right here, just a few words. And this is what I jotted down, first day of school. And so I'm gonna put it in the first box here near the setting because it happened at the beginning. So now we have character. And who is the main character in a bad case of stripes? Well, 
It's Camilla. Yeah, Camilla's the one that we're talking about this whole time. And so the heart, squeaky chair today, the heart really represents the want or the wish that she had. And we found out that that want that she had right there at the beginning, she wanted to fit in. She wanted to fit in with her other classmates. So that's what I wrote in, wanted to fit in. Just some phrases because writing it down will help me remember it. It will help me when I come back to it later. Okay, so now we have the problem. There's the flag that represents the problem. Every story has a problem. And so when she put on that red dress and she looked in the mirror, she screamed because something had happened to her. What was her huge problem? She came down with a bad case of stripes. So I just wrote down, she got a bad case of stripes. Just a few words. It's not a whole sentence. And that's what I did. Okay. Now, when, when you're younger, maybe you draw a picture here and you label it. But in second and third grade, we tend to write several words. I call that more a phrase. It's not really a sentence. It's more like a phrase. Okay. And then what happened? Did it get worse and worse and worse? Yes, it did. Because remember, she went to school and then she turned into the stripes like the flag, the stars and the stripes. And then when somebody would say something like the checkerboard, poof, there she would, she would turn into that. So I started thinking, how can I write that down? How can I write how it got worse and worse and worse? And so I wrote, she changed to match what kids said. So just some words, and I wrote flag to help me remember that she really looked a lot like the flag, okay? And then it got even worse because when the doctors came and they looked at her and they checked her over, um, she just kept turning into all kinds of things. And finally, she turned into her house. Remember that? Okay, so that's what I put. She turned into the walls of the house. Oh, it was getting really, really bad. Now, did Camilla have a guide help her in this passage? She sure did. She had the old woman. And the old woman had her eat what? The old woman had her eat lima beans. And I drew a heart there because that was really her favorite. She loved lima beans. Remember that? So that was the guide. And then what happened? What was the solution? Maybe I'll put that over here by guide. What was the solution? Poof! She turned into herself again. Yes. And so when we read, we have thoughts. But after we're done reading, we continue to have thoughts. And we retell with the most important information. And we put it in order. And then we just jot down what those thoughts were in some words and phrases. So I want you to help me try this out, okay? So we're going to read a new text, believe it or not. We're gonna have a new text. And here's one that I found uh, by author Liz Shockey. And so I'll be the reading voice, I'll read it, but I want you to help me do the thinking after the reading, ready? Brian, Emily, and Stephen were at Longwater Beach with their dad. All three kids were looking forward to their dad playing with them. But when they got there, he didn't. At first, they tried to build sandcastles, but the sand wasn't packing very well. After swimming for a while, they noticed that their dad was still dressed and hadn't changed into his swim trunks. They decided it would be fun to surprise him. They pretended to be building sand ca castles, but they sat quietly in the sand with their buckets full of water and waited until he started to walk over to get changed. When he walked past, they jumped up and splashed water on him. Then their dad got his swim trunks on so they could all swim together. So that's the reading voice. 
reading, visualizing, having thoughts, all oh, that'd be fun. Why isn't dad getting his swim trunks on? All those thinking voice thoughts you probably had while reading. Now continue with the thinking voice after reading. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick the most important information, which will be the story elements, and we're going to have to put them in order. But this time, we're not just going to do it orally. We're going to do it in writing. Okay. So I have my clipboard and I have the storyboard that we were talking about. And I'm going to actually write down what it is that we come up with together. Oh, let me see here. I think I'd rather use a darker marker so that you guys can see it. Okay, so now here's the storyboard. It has the story elements to remind me. And so I need to think about setting and character or characters. It says identify setting, main character, but it could be a group of characters and once. Okay, so where did the story take place? I'll leave the passage up. Remember, it's usually in the very beginning. Reread if you need to. Where did the story take place? Were you thinking Longwater Beach? That's what I was thinking too. Where it was taking place. Longwater Beach. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to write some words and phrases. So main character or characters. Who's in this passage? Yeah, there's three of them. Brian, Emily, and Stephen. So I'm just going to write them down. Okay. What did they want? What did they really want? Yeah. And if we go back into the text, it says all three kids were looking forward to their dad playing with them. So yeah, that's, I agree with that. They wanted dad to play. Cause you know, dads are really busy. Adults are really busy doing grown up things. They don't get to play with kids very much. Okay, so now just some words and phrases. That's all we're doing. We're just tracking our after reading thoughts. Okay, so now the next story element. Do you remember what it is? That's right. The problem. What is the problem? Dad didn't play. You're right. Dad didn't play. Mm-hmm. And he didn't even put on his swim trunks. He was still dressed in his clothes. Okay, so then what happened? Now, it says that describe the problem getting worse or bigger. You know, I'm not sure that it really gets any bigger. I mean, dad still doesn't have his swim trunks on. But what events took place in this passage that kept it going? So let's reread. At first, they tried to build sandcastles, but the sand wasn't packing very well. What? Well, you think that's kind of a problem? Okay, so tried to build sandcastles, but it's ho-hum. It's not working all that great. Okay, then what did they do? Yeah, so they wanted dad to play with them and then they had an idea, didn't they? So they were pretending to still be building sandcastles, but they sat quietly in the sand with their buckets full of water and waited. Is that what you were thinking? Something about that? So how would we say that? How would we pull out some of those words and phrases to tell what they were doing? Sat, what did they do? They sat quietly. 
So Q, quietly in the sand with buckets of what? Of water. Okay, so I'm gonna do a sneak attack, aren't they? All right, so now we've got our story elements here. We've got setting character once, problem, and you know, it gets worse or different events that happen there in the middle. Is there a guide? Is there anybody else that comes to help them? No, not in this story, you're right. And so then what's the solution? How is this solved? What did the kids do? <gasps> they jumped up and splashed them with water. Okay, so they splashed dad with water. Actually, I'm going to make that a capital D. You know, teachers like things to be correct spelling and grammar and punctuation. So that's capital D-A-D. -D. All right. So now what I want you to see is this is pretty easy. Once you really think about the story elements and you think about the order in which they go, you can do this. This is easy. You just re-engage that thinking voice and think about what would be the most important information and what order does it need to go in? And then you just write it with words and phrases on the graphic organizer. So what I want you to do then is I would like for you to practice reading this and having these after reading thoughts and then actually jotting down some of your thoughts, okay? So what I have are a couple of short passages that you can read or you can have somebody read with you. And I want you to think about how could I retell? This is the passage right here. It's just one page, kind of like our beach story, okay? And I want you to think about what are the story elements? What would be the most important information? What order could I put them in? And so I've got a storyboard here. Now you could print this off and write on it. You could make your own boxes because basically that's what i did over here i just made lines you could make your own boxes you could draw your own little icons with the setting and the character and the heart you could do that but we also have some links for you so that you can actually type this into a google doc or something like that if that's what your teacher wants you to do so maybe you would type it in to the document where you can actually add your thinking voice thoughts so I've given you two passages, and this one is the first one. It's kind of short, and then the storyboard. And I'd like for you to try the next one. I know it's kind of long, but the words are easy. And so I'd like for you to try the next one and see if you can put those in there, okay? You are doing so well at doing this orally. I wanna see if now you can retell and write down some of the important information in the correct order. That's what you would do if you were in Mrs. McCullough's class, but your teacher might have another idea.